racial inequities continue in the workforce. That's despite education or experience level. According to a 2019 survey by the compensation data and software firm Payscale, black men earn 87 cents on the dollar than men of other racial groups. Hispanic and Native American men make four cents more. Asian men earn the highest at a dollar and 15 cent, earning 15 cents more than white men. Now the racial pay and promotions gap can make it challenging for black people to advance, but there's a movement happening that could help maximize our advantage in the corporate arena. And joining me now is Shandria Harris, career development and HR consultant at Higher Cultures. Shandria, welcome back to BNC. It's good to have you with us. Happy to be here. So Shandria, anybody hearing those numbers are alarmed. If you're a black person, you're like, okay, why aren't we making the same amount of money? But we know it's on the book. So, you know, it looks like 2021 is the year of taking risks as a substantial number of employees are handing in their pink slips. This movement is being coined the great resignation. What is causing that? Yeah, so a number of data and career career researchers are finding that the great resignation is coming. So a lot of employees will be um, turning in their pink slips and resigning for work from roles in search of opportunities to pursue their passions and their interests and to look into their purpose, actually. And so, you, I mean, you talk about that. I mean, it's not always an easy thing to walk away from a job. So what is kind of that driving force to say, you know what, I can walk away from it and find something else to do? Yeah, you know, so what researchers is finding is that people are just in, in search of work-life balance. Like they're looking for that balance and being able to pause during COVID to have access to being productive and doing other things other than just working from nine to five in an office mm -hmm. has really created a space for employees to really look at what they want to do and pursue passion projects more. So that, that work-life balance is really what is causing employees to, to take a look at their, their full-time job. And are we seeing this movement across all birth generations? And, you know, when you talk about passion projects, but also needing to make sure you still got a paycheck coming in, what are these people doing? Where are they going? And is there a quest for higher pay? So there is a quest for higher pay. There's a quest for work like balance and remote work and hybrid opportunities. Like I mentioned, like that balance is so important and they're looking, they're seeking that. So opportunities to work remote, to work hybrid, to receive more vacation days, to do more volunteer work, to pursue their passions. Like employees are really looking for balance and they and they're trying to find it now. And so during the pandemic, a lot of folks have gotten a chance to work from home. You just touched on this a moment ago. So some folks are back in the office, but some aren't. But do you find mm -hmm. people enjoy the idea of not being, we would say, micromanaged at home as they would in the office space? You know, I think micromanagement plays a role into that. But one thing that we have noticed while working during COVID is that we can get a lot of work done and do it from home. And so it rather it's just doing laundry and finishing a project. I mean, just being able to do other things than being at a desk in an office um, is what people are looking at. And being able to have that balance is what they really like. And so companies who are looking into balance and finding ways to fulfill their employees will be you know, greater at achieving and retaining them during this great resignation. So would you say it's best for those companies to start looking at ways to long-term let folks stay home instead of bringing them back into the workspace, if you wanna keep them? I think hybrid. Absolutely. I think hybrid is important. I think, you know, not being secluded to a certain time of the day or hours or even going down to a four day work week. Um, research has shown that that is actually something that employees like as well. But being flexible is what is important and that balance is huge. Mm -hmm. And what about black people? How can they maximize from this? Yes, so black and brown folks are in high, in high demand. We're a hot commodity right now in the workplace from the United States point of view. And a lot of companies across America have strengthened their DNI initiatives where they are looking to find great talent, you know, to leverage opportunities, number one, to just apply. Mm -hmm. really apply to the opportunity, understand the job description, know your values, know what you add to that team and the potential contribution you can bring and begin to leverage your salary, looking into your, you know, the, your city and your current city and state and what is the range according to your job sector, whether you're in a public or, or private or government, knowing the range of 
opportunities and salaries in that area will help you leverage and know what is they're looking to pay. And once you know what they're looking to pay and you know what skills you add, you can show up confident and you can show up and demand more money. And in a space where, like we just mentioned those numbers before about how we typically aren't paid the same, how do they still kind of have that conversation that allows them to know beyond just me being black or brown and you having to be inclusive, but it's my <laughs> skill set is the driving force behind why I should get this job and why I should be paid for it. Absolutely. So you have to know your skill set and be able to share that, yeah. right? If you are a master at implementation, a software system, a program initiative, clearly articulate your value. So you have to show up and know what they need so that you can leverage the salary opportunities. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give people right now? You know, if they're planning, they're writing that resignation letter at this moment uh, and thinking about, you know, I'm going to jump on the either the bandwagon or I just want to, I've been dying to do this for a long time. What advice would you give them? I say really look at the job description, unpack what the needs are, be able to compare and contrast your previous experience to what they need and show up truly confident, knowing that the work that you've done in the past is going to help you leverage opportunities for promotions, advancements and, and in new roles. So you have to really do some research and know what you have and what you can bring to the table. Yep. Everybody got to know what they bring to the table. I know my skill set. I know you know it too, Shandria. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that with us tonight. We appreciate your time. Thank you.